This audio fiction is recorded for an adult audience. It may contain scenes of explicit sex, violence and disturbing supernatural entities. Listener discretion is recommended. Come, lend me your ear, as I speak to you of the macabre, the cursed, the maligned, the malignant, the possessed, and the downright demonic. Bolt all doors, lock all windows. Are you alone? Are you sure? I suggest you check under the bed, carefully, twice. Baratanak, a new darkness at the world's edge. Declan's eyes weighed heavy as he looked up from the cluttered kitchen table. The ceiling fan turned lazily above his head, the old fridge whirred behind him. Steam rose from a coffee cup at his elbow, joining the comforting aroma of an audibly bubbling saucepan of sweet potato, corn and heart of palm chowder on the gas stove. Since mid-afternoon, the kitchen's atmosphere had also been infused with incense and candle smoke from bowls and sticks cluttered in a small altar near a slew of freshly folded origami cranes and the KitchenAid mixer. Lines of cursive crowded the pages of Declan's notebooks, their pages weighted with bright stones of amethyst, jade and carnelian. One blue glass eye of Horus also punctuated the collection. On some pages, his prose diminished in height from left to right. It's a sure sign of insanity, he joked to himself. The handwritten lines of one notebook wound inwards, like a snail's shell, in crude, distorted circles. It was a style of note-keeping he'd first spontaneously and inexplicably started in Bloomsbury. Declan wrote with a conscious, laborious effort, glancing back and forth between his books. Several times he rubbed his eyes to pull his mind from stupor. Since New Year's Eve, when Le Papillon was flooded with strangers, both invited and uninvited, he had increasingly had to fight to focus. Sometimes now, during daylight hours too, he was unable to claim his mind. The notebooks on the kitchen table usually lived on Declan's bed, behind the sweeping pyramidic shroud of his mosquito net. It was there that he documented the terrifying, haunted visions. Visions of what might have crept into the house, keeping mostly to its gloomier corners. Hidden among pillows and a duvet in the small hours, Declan was a ghostly apparition seen through the diaphanous net. He'd become a wraith, from whom words and conceptions at first had begged and clamoured for release, and now demanded and compelled his service, manifesting on his computer screen. They fell silent, sometimes in the act of typing. Sometimes. Even when he was exhausted and his fingertips raw, new words arose and ordered him on, mercilessly. His head was crowded with narratives and prose of an increasingly disturbing nature. They spanned the distant past to the present, but whispered nothing of the future. He had had some success in suppressing. Then they spoke in voices he was sure were not him, but were still somehow in his head. Vague mutterings in dark corners, barely heard whispers. 
As time went on, these whispers grew in confidence, more intelligible, more lucid and fluid. From previously unknown recesses of his mind, the words called to him with increasingly sharp, tormented tongues. Some were even prideful, snarling their stories. Some nights they became a maddening cacophony, fighting to be heard, coming faster than his possessed fingers could type or scrawl with their furious demand that he act as scribe. He was only barely aware of what was happening. At times he would awaken catatonic, battling the shackles of a terrifying paralysis, only to discover new chapters, written mysteriously, as if he were under the secret tutelage of the elves working for the famed brothers Grimm Cobbler. Time and again he would blame fatigue for his failing recollection, though those accusations fell hollow at his feet. He would barely blink before the next paragraph rushed into his mind, demanding. In the past weeks he'd seen too many things for events he had escaped in Bloomsbury to remain distant. The fear gnawed at his stomach and ached in his marrow. Too many revelations, too many omens. He was in trouble, he knew it, and leaving a record was his last defence. Thank you for listening. If you have enjoyed this episode, then please subscribe. I must leave you now, but do not despair. If you listen to the next instalment, the curse cannot harm you, but you must believe. Now pull the blanket over your head and be quiet. You are not alone. Shh.